Ahoy there sailors, TX141 here, also known as Paul, welcoming you to our first ever World of Warships gameplay video for this channel. And to kickstart our World of Warships videos, it'd be a good idea to have a rather epic game to display, and I personally think we satisfy that by a huge margin, but more on that later. Today's gameplay is going to feature the Tier 1 American ship known as the Erie Class Gunboat, although for the purposes of the game it's simplified to be an A Cruiser Class ship. She's a rather sturdy ship, but unfortunately as I've only played 38 games today, I cannot provide you with a solid review on the ship yet, as I know very little about the overall mechanics of World of Warships, or indeed the mechanics as applied to each individual ship in the game. As you can see, my highest ship so far is a Samson at Tier 2 an American destroyer. But in terms of the setup we have on our Erie, we are led by Peter Harper, a Lieutenant Commander who has the following skills. Situation Awareness, Basics of Survivability, Basic Firing Training, and Expert Loader. In terms of the modules we have employed on the Erie, well we have all the upgrades so far, I mean the top tier upgrades of the ship, and on top of this we have the standard armament of high explosive shells and armour piercing rounds for our 152mm 47 Mark 17 batteries which are consisting of four single firing 152mm guns and for our consumable we have the standard damage control party 1. As for our upgrades we have decided to go with the main battery modification 1 upgrade which has the following effects a minus 20% to the risk of magazine detonation minus 20% to the risk of the main battery becoming incapacitated and minus 20% to the main battery repair time. And with the setup of our ship covered, let us get into our gameplay for today. We set sail to the Islands map, a domination type game populated solely by tier 1 gunboats, with both teams comprising a majority of the American Erie class gunboat and a minority of the Japanese Hashidate class gunboat. You will see that I'm in a division with a fellow player, and that player is my dad. We are both thoroughly enjoying our Erie class gunboats for the time being, and thought that we'd work together tonight, or ideally when we were playing, in order to see what kind of carnage we could cause. It is our intention to proceed off to the starboard relative to where our ship is at the moment, and head along the eye line between the two islands at the bottom of the map, i.e. the southern section of the map. By pushing along this flank, we hope to be able to get some shots on the enemy ships that proceed into the middle of the map when sight allows and cut off any enemy ships that try to go for that flank as a reversal move. It is my intention through these videos not to provide review based commentary but more battle analysis and hopefully my analysis will become more useful as these videos go on. I apologise for any hesitation or nervousness, this is the first time I've decided to perform an analysis of a World of Warships game as I've already mentioned or alluded to at least. We can see that we're proceeding at three quarters throttle and the Erie is quite a fast ship. It is faster than its Hashidate opponent, coming at a top speed of 20.7 knots I believe, versus the Hashidate's 19.9 knots, not entirely sure about that so don't quote me, but I know it's slightly faster. My dad's proceeding at half throttle, so that way I will overtake on his starboard side, and this means that I can get into the front and lead the fight. We have a tendency to use this setup as my dad prefers a more calm and collected approach whilst I'm a little bit more brash, and that is why I've decided to go down the American destroyer line as quickly as possible. Nonetheless, returning to the gameplay at hand, we can see that the majority of our team are also pushing towards this southern flank. There seems to be a tendency at tier 1 at least for everyone to cluster up in numbers. It's advisable, especially if everyone's inexperienced, like myself, indeed my dad, to try and work together as a group and see who can come off on top. We'll soon note that in compilation to that Hashidate behind the island, we also have an Eerie and we open up with a barrage. Our shot's going good and we manage to score one hit and set the Eerie on fire, at which point we pick up on another Eerie coming out from the rightmost island and we open up with another barrage, scoring a single hit. We'll continue on this path trying to knock out this Eerie that is pushing towards the southernmost section of the map and then we'll switch up our fire towards the Hashidate which has been revealed behind the island as we have moved along. You will see as we score another hit that we've gone to full throttle now. We want to be as fast as possible and be able to react if the enemy ships decide to turn their fire on us. We miss unfortunately with that burst but we open fire again. 
double left clicking to make sure that all of our guns fire simultaneously rather than in sequential fire and that's a good thing to be aware of. We switch to armour piercing here hoping to do a little bit more damage. One of our shells penetrates and over penetrates the Hashidate due to its limited armour by comparison with the Eerie. We fire another armour piercing burst achieving a single hit and doing minimal damage and the Hashidate is eliminated by one of our friendlies, indeed by my dad. At this point we switch to high explosive and start to club the Eerie to pieces, getting in two good hits here and then firing away again and scoring one more hit. She's on her last legs. We continue to open fire and we can see that our shots are getting closer and closer and we pick up our first kill, striking strong on her bow. At this point as we push along a little bit further we pick up on a Hashidate which is pushed towards our friendly territory and indeed towards our flag. Unfortunately she is behind our island but we can see an Eerie which is well out in the open and she's gone right into the jaws of our guns and indeed the guns of our friendlies around us. We strike twice, open fire again and we strike twice more. Gradually whittling down the health of the Eerie and we can also see that our allies are doing just as much work. We score another two hits bringing her down to her last fifth of health and one more burst should do it. Fortunately for us, while our teammates knocks it out, although our rounds were on target if needed, and at this point, having cleared out the southern section of the map, we start to come about to our port. We notice an Eerie right off in the distance and we range our shot in. Dead on the extent of our range, coming just short, keeping an eye on the fact that our range with this ship is 9.6 kilometers. And with our burst, she goes in and overshoots, meaning that we have to recalibrate, but my dad picks up the kill. We're working rather effectively here with already three ships between us. We notice the Hashidate which was going for the flag and now coming out from behind the island and we open fire. We pick up a hit on her stern and we continue by providing a little bit more lead. She seems to be on a straight path and we are going to capitalise on this. Unfortunately our shots land just a little bit in front and so we extend our range. The shells go in and we pick up our second kill with our single shot landing on the bow. At this point we've turned back in towards the centre of the map now. We're at full health and the teams be, seem to be rather balanced, with five ships on our team and six on the enemy team. Although we start to take fire from an enemy Eerie which has stayed towards its cap circle. We're heading directly towards the Eerie, trying to avoid their broadside as much as possible here, with only our two frontal guns being able to shoot back. We fall a little bit short and at full velocity we're going to continue the pressure simply because the other enemy ships may try and come around the island, eye off to our port and try and get some shots into us with another broadside. We do not want to be, get, uh, we do not want to be caught in this crossfire so as a result we're going at full speed. We manage to hit the Eerie with an armour piercing shell which seems to penetrate and we return to high explosive because we're too far out in order to do effective damage with the armour piercing rounds. We score another hit and the Eerie is starting to relocate behind the island in front of us. We've lost sight of them and this means that we have done our job, putting pressure on our opponent and forcing them to disengage, as we can see the shells flying over us. We now notice another enemy Eerie cutting through the centre of the map, and a good portion of our allies are engaging the Eerie and so will we, although my dad is currently pushing around the southern flank of the map and trying to get a shot onto the back of the enemy ships that are hiding behind their flag. We set the Eerie on fire and as we head towards the island we open up with a broadside hoping to do a little bit more damage. We score three very good hits on the broadside and we open fire once again. I apologise for the annoying siren saying that we're going to collide with the island, I assure you we are not. And unfortunately the Eerie manages to get behind the island meaning that our final broadside is ineffective. We begin to reverse as we want to try and get a shot on any other ships that expose themselves off to our port side as they come around the island. And we are hoping that the Eerie that we have targeted and the Hashidate, which is just a little bit off to its starboard if you were to be in the shoes of the Eerie ship, will come out very shortly. And we can see here that the Eerie is just about to do so. And my dad has managed to relocate into a better position now off to my starboard side. At this point we open fire on the Eerie and we achieve the kill. Kill two now, and we take a look at the Eerie which has exposed itself completely and the Hashidate. Our initial burst goes wide because we do not account for the fact we're going backwards rather than forwards, so we switch to three quarters throttle. 
and at this point we achieve four direct hits on the broadside of the earring with our own broadside shots. Sets it on fire as well, we open up again, achieving another two hits and gradually whittling her down with an armour piercing set. Although we're seeing once again that our armour piercing rounds are not doing as much damage at the moment. We penetrate the Hashidate, over penetrate it would seem, so we switch back to high explosive. Achieving a nasty set of hits and picking up our confederate award. We'll go into that later. At this point we try to get back behind the island mass as our opponents have done the same and we are now down to approximately half our health. We need to team up with my dad here in order to make sure that we can stay alive and win the battle, as it is 2 versus 4. Although at this point the circumstances are going to get a little bit hairy. I'm trying to get as close as possible to the island off of my port side so that way my dad can come alongside me and we can begin to engage the enemy ships hiding around their own flag at B. It is our intention to force a 2 vs 1 or 2 vs 2 engagement as we believe that the Hashidate on screen right now and the other enemy ship which we were not engaging a couple of seconds ago will both be going for A. This means we'll take our time and allow the enemy team to start to capture A as we work together to knock out the ships that may be defending B. We want to try and even up the odds and bring two broadsides to bear rather than one and perhaps some forward firing guns. We go to full throttle now, my dad proceeding just behind, and we see that the Hashidate is opening up on my dad's ship. We need to get into the fight and make it a 2 vs 1. We open up, scoring a hit to the citadel and an incapacitation. Doing a significant amount of damage but we need to do more. It's got over half its health left. We achieve 4 square high explosive hits, but it's still not enough. We open up once again. Achieving 4 more hits, and we have now brought her down to our last little bit of health. Unfortunately my dad gets knocked out, and it's now 4 versus 1, or 3 versus 1, and we are the only hope. So we go toe to toe with the Eerie here, scoring some hits on her stern. 3 hits, armour piercing but over penetrating it would seem. We open up with another armour piercing barrage. The Eerie player seems to have started to overcompensate for our motion as we are picking up our speed. This means we are not taking any hits until our final burst and they retaliate. We have 4 kills in our bag now. Apologies, 5 kills to our tally now. And we are switching back to high explosive rounds. We have approximately 1 third of our health left or just, le just under 1 third of our health and we are going to have to go into a 2 vs 1. Or at least we think. We have been detected thanks to the detection warning and we are heading straight towards the enemy Hashidate who seems to spot us before we spotted them and we cannot afford to be out in the open here to face their broadside. We are going at full speed and fortunately the Hashidate has not ranged in. We are swerving left and right to make sure that none of the fire hits us or the minimal amount hits us and we are heading towards the island off on our port side to try and get some cover. We need to get in close and pride ourselves on the fact that we may be a slightly more accurate player than them in order to bring them down as they have double our health approximately. The collision sirens are going off but we will need to come away from the island shortly and having disengaged the Hashidate for a time being we can see them once again now that we come out from the island. They've opened up with a broadside and we are firing with our forward facing guns. We take a hit and they open up with another broadside and it would seem here that the Hashidate is using armour piercing rounds due to the limited amount of damage we are taking but we also take a hit off our port side from the other enemy ship who is reluctant to engage in the 2 vs 1 potentially because they have very little health or want to stay in the cap zone. So it's going to be a 1 vs 1 fortune for us and we are starting to take light damage because some of the armour piercing rounds are ricocheting or are over penetrating. We open fire once again and we achieve a single hit. We are pursuing the Hashidate down relentlessly here and we take another broadside with only a single round doing any damage. It is clear that these rounds are not the ones capable of bringing us down at this point. But there's no time to rejoice. We open up with a quick broadside achieving two hits. The Hashidate misses. At this point we switch back to only firing our forward facing guns. We keep changing up our orientation to try and shake our opponent's fire. And now that they've got their back to us, they can only fire their two rear guns and another set of rounds have just bounced off of us or not done any damage. They scrape another two rounds off us doing minimal damage. I would say they're armour piercings but I may be wrong. Another broadside and we achieve a hit to the citadel, a high calibre award and two hits. She's going down. And with our sixth kill there's only one enemy ship left but could she be facing her guns at us as we come around? One last time and we're spotted. It's going to be a nail biter. They open fire and miss and we return and it's our seventh kill.
and having won the game and regained our composure, it is now time for us to take a look at the post-game stats. Now that was a comeback. And the jubilation you've just heard was nothing compared to the jubilation that my dad and myself had when we managed to pull this game out of the bag. In terms of what we earned then, we picked up 87,538 silver credits and 1,375 XP. We also picked up three achievements, the first being the Solo Warrior for standing alone against four ships and winning the battle. We also picked up the Confederate achievement for damaging six or more ships with at least 20% of the health of each ship being knocked off by ourselves. And the final achievement was the High Calibre one, where we damaged four or more ships and exceeded a total damage pool of 30% of the enemy team's total health. In terms of our battle performance pins, we picked up 70 target hit pins, one incapacitation, seven ships destroyed, three fires set, two hits to the Citadel, and one base defend pin. Looking at the team scores, we can see that both teams were rather evenly matched, with the majority of kills in both cases going towards the top five, or in the case of the enemy team, the top three players of the teams. For our little division, I and my dad and myself, we picked up three quarters of the kills available, i.e. there were 12 players and we picked up nine kills. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, do remember that in order to win a team game, it is a team effort not the effort of the individual. Going into a little bit more detail in terms of damage caused then, we can see that we find a total of 189 shells, with 72 hitting the target, and this is just over a third of the total fired, meaning that we had to work on our accuracy and range finding a little bit more. Of the 72 that hit, 20 were armour piercing shells with 18 penetrating their target, and the other 52 were high explosive shells, with three fires being set as a result. In terms of the total damage caused, we caused a total of 39,264 health points. In terms of our credits and XP, we are not going to go into this any further as we are using a tier 1 ship which does not suffer any auto repair penalties after a game. To conclude then, when setting sail in the Erie at tier 1, do not be afraid when you are the last ship remaining to come out fighting in one of those many versus one engagements, as nobody puts Eerie in the corner. And so I've been TX141, and if you've enjoyed this video why not leave a like, comment or subscribe for future World of Warships gameplays on this channel. But until next time fellow sailors, take care and fair seas.